Hey everybody, welcome to Dan Bowen Photography. This week I'm going to talk about what types of instant film you can shoot in 2016. This episode is going to be a little bit like a show and tell. I'm going to give you an overview of all the types of cameras and films that are still available today so you can get out and start shooting some instant film. So for starters, let's define instant film. What is it? Basically, it's film that develops instantly. Um, most cameras that shoot instant film give you a print right out of the camera. So it was sort of the millennials instant gratification in a pre-digital world, if you want to think of it like that. So most people associate instant film with Polaroid, which was the company that invented instant film and really was the big player in the market for most of the 20th century. In fact, most people refer to the prints as Polaroids. But even though Polaroid is gone, there are still several companies that are out there today making film in 2016. So you can still dust off some of your old Polaroid cameras and get out and shoot some photos. So there are three main types of film available uh, for instant film in 2016, although there is a caveat for one of them, and I'll talk about that in a moment. So the first is the Impossible Project, and they make film for old Polaroid cameras, and they're now actually have just released their own camera, the i1, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. But they're the first place to go, I think, if you want to shoot actual Polaroid cameras and still use those. Another brand is Fuji Film's Instax line, and they make the Instax Mini, which is gives you sort of a uh, photo booth style, uh, small print, and then their Instax Wide, which is the one I have, which gives you these wider prints that are bigger than the classic Polaroid flame, uh, classic Polaroid frame. And then finally, uh, there's what's called Peel Apart or Pack Film, and Fuji was making this stuff up until 2016 when they discontinued FP100Z, which was the last pack film available on the market. So you can still find the stock of it online, um, the prices have skyrocketed, so you can still shoot it, but you won't be able to for much longer, uh, because when it's gone, it's gone. So first I want to give you an overview of the Impossible Project and the film that they produce. So a few years ago, when Polaroid was closing down one of their last factories in Europe, a group of people got together to buy up the factory and start making Polaroid film again. So they reverse engineered the film and started releasing it onto the market, and now today they've grown into a bigger company that is producing film for several different types of cameras, and they have their own camera that they just released this year. So the different line of cameras that you can shoot Impossible Project film are are the Polaroid 600 cameras and most of the 600 cameras they look like this. Um, this one is called the Spirit 600. The one that's sitting behind me is the Sun 600 and those cameras um, they're pretty widely available and you can find them all over the place for fairly cheap. So another line that Impossible Project makes film for are the SX-70 series cameras, which were essentially Polaroid's uh, pro-level camera back in the day. Um, I believe they started making them in the 70s and produced them for a long time. Uh, you can still find these out on the market used. Uh, this is the Alpha 1 series, which is pretty sweet. It's got metal construction and just takes fantastic photos. Um, so just to give you an idea, the Polaroids look like this. They have sort of a square frame with a little bit of a larger border around them. This is what the classic Polaroid looks like, um, but not all the instant films out there have this square frame. And finally, Impossible Project also makes film for the Polaroid Spectra line of cameras. I don't have an example of one of those with me and I've never shot with one, so I don't, I'm not the most knowledgeable about it. But if you have a Spectre camera, you can shoot uh, Impossible Project film as well. And then they also make large format film for Polaroid backs on large format cameras, like 8x10 cameras. Now I will say Impossible Project film is usually fairly pricey. Um, if you want to buy 
typical 600 film or SX70 film. It's usually about $25 a pack and you only get eight photos, so it's pretty expensive, about $3 a photo. So you kind of have to think about that when you are starting to get into um, instant film today. But there is another line of cameras that uh, costs a little bit less money for the film, and that is Fuji's Instax line. So a pack of Instax film will run you around $9 for 10 photos. Um, you can buy like two packs of 10 on Amazon for around 16 bucks, so it's a little bit cheaper to start shooting with the uh, Instax cameras. So Fuji makes uh, two different types of Instax cameras. They have the Instax Mini and the Instax Wide. Now I don't have the Instax Mini, um, but basically it shoots a uh, little uh, photo booth style tiny print photos. And just to give you an idea of what the wide photo looks like compared to a classic Polaroid, you can see the photo is actually uh, a lot wider, uh, hence the name Instax Wide. Um, so it's kind of cool because you can get more of a wide angle view if you're not really into the square format. Now I think the Instax camera is fun to shoot with, but it doesn't give you a lot of control. Um, it's not like the Polaroid SX70 and Fuji doesn't really make a more pro level camera. I mean, the thing is entirely made out of plastic. It's really um, doesn't have a lot of controls on it. You can't manually focus or do anything like that. Um, so it's definitely not a pro level camera, but it is fun to shoot with. But I will point out that a company called Lomography makes a camera called the Lomo Instant Wide that accepts Fuji Instax film. And from what I've heard, that camera does allow you more controls and can do more things than you can with the Fuji Instax camera. So that's another option if you're looking to uh, take more control of your Instax photos, you can shoot with the Lomo Instant Wide. So the final type of film and camera that you can shoot with is uh, peel apart or pack film with Polaroid LAN cameras. Um, they're not still making these today, there haven't been new uh, LAN cameras or cameras that shoot this peel apart film for a very long time, but you can still find a ton of them on the used market. Um, basically anything called a LAN camera will accept this type of film. And uh, this is the Polaroid Super Shooter Plus, and it's a camera I got as a gift and didn't even realize that there was still film available for this type of camera. I didn't even think I'd be able to shoot with it. Um, but I was happy to find out that I can actually use this camera. So again, Polaroid used to be the main producer of peel apart films, but they discontinued them a little bit before they declared bankruptcy. And when they did, Fuji started producing uh, black and white and color uh, peel apart films. This one is Fuji FP100C, and it was the last color um, or any, it was the last type of pack film in production until Fuji discontinued it this year. So now the prices have gone way up. A pack of this is about $30 now and it's becoming really hard to find. And there's also a black and white version called FP3000B that has been discontinued for a couple of years and it's even more expensive and getting really tricky to find. So if you want to start shooting uh, peel apart Polaroid films, uh, now is the time because when this stuff is gone, it's going to be gone forever. So basically to give you an idea of what the peel apart photos look like, this is one I've already shot and peeled apart already, but I'll show you kind of what it looks like. So um, you shoot this in the camera, then you pull the tab out of the back of the camera and the film develops in about two to three minutes. And then when it's done developing, you just peel the print off of this and this is a negative. And so you have sort of a wider frame. It's very comparable to the print size on the Instax photo, although the photo takes up more um, for the pack film print than it does for the Instax print. So yeah, that pretty much covers it. There aren't that many instant films available in 2016, but there are a few, and I think all of them are worth trying out and shooting. Um, if you're interested in this type of format, I really love instant film and shooting Polaroid cameras in particular. It's a lot of fun for me. It's one of my favorite mediums to work in, uh, particularly for portrait stuff. As always, if you like these videos, please subscribe by clicking on the red box next to my head. And follow me on Instagram. And what the hell, Snapchat too. I'll put my handles down there. Um, I got a lot of content coming out on both those feeds now. 
So if you're interested in seeing what I'm doing in the social media sphere, uh, check me out on Instagram and Snapchat. Over the next few weeks, I will be doing three more videos on instant film. I'm gonna do one on the Fuji Instax camera. I'm gonna do one on Polaroid SX70, and then peel apart films with Polaroid LAN cameras. So I hope to see you around. This has been another episode of Danville and Photography. Peace.